What's up, everybody? This is John Della Rose, and we are back. Make sure to go down to my newsletter, which is in the description below, and sign up and get a free graphic novel. If you enjoyed this review, hit the like and subscribe button, and we will be off to the races here. Of course, I love to review indie books as much as I can. I try to just do the ones that I enjoy to help you find some cool new stuff. And this is Curie by uh, Matt Krotz. And uh, I am friends with Matt Krotz, so uh, they're full disclosure there, but that doesn't matter. I mean, I'm friends with lots of people, but this book really spoke to me. Really nice quality printing. I love these little folds in here. This is very, very much like these deluxe edition manga that I'm getting lately. And it provides a bookmark and it's got a nice map here drawn out to start out. And this is a full graphic novel. Now there are two parts to this currently and I've only read and, and only reviewed the first part. But it starts out right here. We got about two chapters in here. The first one's kind of short. Next one's a bit longer. He wrote and illustrated this all himself. And we get a uh, interesting time period, Alexandria, uh, Egypt, 250. This is kind of not really where a lot of people set their books. So it's curious as to what was going on here. And you start to think about it and get into it. And it opens up with uh, Caesar given a uh, festival opening to, uh, for, uh, Alexander saying, you know, this is the festival of Alexander back to Alexander the great. And we get in and we involve ourselves in this little conspiracy that's going on to steal this Ruby. And while well, this speech is going on now, it, it does start off a little bit slow and there's some confusing parts here where it's like, you know, you're switching back and forth between the scenes quite a bit, not sure who these people are, uh, but of course you, you kind of find that out a little bit later into the story. So we got a thief who's stealing this ruby and then she conscripts some people who were, uh, I suppose, supposed to do that also, uh, hired mercenaries and uh, they're off to the races. And in the background, we kind of get these Roman guys and we see what's going on with their political stuff. Uh, it's like I said, it's a little slow on the start. You see that most of the pages are just kind of people talking, which is fine uh, because we're going to get some cool stuff momentarily here. Matt's got a really interesting art style that's very different. It reminds me kind of of the webcomic era in like the 2010 to 2014, where where these like these stories like this would would start to take off a little bit, and you'd have um, you'd have full narrative stories uh, in the webcomic world like the Phoenix Requiem and things like that. He's very much got a very similar style to that. I love his use of color. I think he uses bright and dynamic colors, which are very different than what most of the industry does. Of course, now we're getting into a nighttime scene, so it's a little different, but for the most part, he's got a lot of, of cool color tones to it, and I, I love the way that it all flows. Now, uh, personally, I probably, with the way that he put borders around uh, all the pages here, I probably would have made everything full bleed and out to the edges on this comic. It's a little bit smaller than a standard size comic. Let me see, if, I don't have my tripod on me, so let me try to try to hold up in the pages to kind of show you. As you can see, the, the standard size comic, it goes up to about here and the width's about the same. So it's a little smaller than a standard size comic. So it probably would have been nice to have the art uh, extended to the borders a little bit. But as a person who uh, does a lot of comic book formatting, I know how tedious and awful uh, it is to do full bleed art. <laughs> so I, I, I feel his pain there. It didn't, it didn't, because it's all just, it blends in. It doesn't ruin the reading experience or anything like that. It draws a very nice ship right here. And basically they stole the Senator's ship and are off uh, to go uh, uncover the mysteries of what this ruby is because it's got some ancient lore to it. And uh, again, the beautiful color color schemes right here, nice stuff. This is where it really gets awesome. So when you saw that chapter two change, we're on page 39. This is a hundred and I think 20 page graphic novel. So it really, it really kicks into full gear at that point. And just like really, we are out on the open seas. Uh, we have a lot more going on. We have tons of action now. Uh, this beautiful double page spread of this. And our gal, uh, who we met at the beginning of this, uh, is kind of taking command of the ship. There's a strange guy in the basement, and he is uh, in chains for some reason. We find out that the senator was involved in this uh, conspiracy 
kind of going like that's circling around this ruby, but we still don't know what it is. Uh, they get attacked, and because people realize that they stole this ship, and uh, and at this point we get little hints of of some sorcery or things like that happening. But at this point, it really takes off, and the ruby uh, creates this strange magic which really screws a lot of people up, and you can just see the pretty pretty uh, contrast between the brightness of that ruby and uh, the nighttime scene here. Beautiful scenery going on right here. The lighthouse is getting destroyed. Oh my gosh. And yeah, so at this point, you're just going boom, 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 page to page, so much action, so much visceral. Uh, look at this, just pretty stuff, impressionistic in spots. Uh, really did a beautiful job on this. And it ends with a cliffhanger, and I presume the story keeps going on at this point. Of course it does, because there's a volume two that's out, which I'll review uh, as soon as I get to reading it. <laughs> so uh, we learn that there's something uh, powerful about that ruby, which the Roman senator wanted, and he'll be chasing it down along with our heroes who are uh, trying to stop whatever horrors he's going to try to inflict upon the world. So that's it, a uh, very nice classic fantasy story right that there, there's an item, they've got the item, they've stolen, we, we're, we've got a roguish thief in, in as sort of the person in charge. We've got uh, a quest for something much bigger, which, uh, which you know, sets them on a uh, hero's journey and adventure, and a very nice start. So I, I think the writing was solid. Uh, I think the art was beautiful and very unique and cool looking, which is always awesome to discover. And I love the colors. I think the colors really make the book uh, pop and make it happen. Colors don't really get enough attention uh, for what they do. And when an artist like Matt uses the colors himself, he really has a vision, you can tell, that's that's like unique, different, professional, and cool. So this is 100% 10 out of 10, high recommend. Um, I'm going to see if there's a link up for this still and put it in the description below at some point so you guys can check it out also. All right, uh, hit that like and subscribe button, guys. We will be back soon.